you want to welcome you to this very special edition of Cab Nation TV Congressional Viewpoints. And we're delighted to have with us Congresswoman Donna Christensen. I call her the ICS Godmother on the Hill. Why? Because without her mentorship, we would certainly not be where we are today. So I'm delighted to be here with you, Congressman. Thank you so much for taking time from your busy schedule well, to join us. It's my pleasure. I think you've been overly generous in your opening remarks, but <laughs> I'm glad for any little role that I could have played in helping ICS move you, you along. You probably don't remember, yes. but our first event on the Hill in 1999 yes. was sponsored by your office. So yes. we learned all we know about the Hill because of your generosity. Yes, and it's been my honor to do to co-host your November galas. As well, over exactly, the yes. over the years. So thank you. Yeah. What I wanted to start out with is you have lived a life of service here on the Hill. Um, what really made you decide, I mean, first you became a medical doctor, what made you decide to make, make a transition, if you will, to the health of the human body, to the health of the community? What made you decide to serve us with politics? Well, you know, I, my, I was always involved in community activities at home as an advocate for different issues. Even while I was practicing, I joined the Democratic Party as a way to further those efforts because I started out doing them pretty much on my own. And um, as a family physician, when a person comes in, you see the whole family, they come into your office, and a lot of times um, it's not so much a physical complaint as what's going on in their lives. Mm -hmm. And whether it's a job or a lack of a job or um, housing issues or, or um, problems with their children and drug issues or any other, number of things that are affecting their lives and really affecting their general health as well. And so you see all of that. And when the opportunity came available to run for an open seat for Congress, although it had not been my original plan, <laughs> the urging of the people at home and um, seeing that I could possibly make a difference on a larger scale to help to address some of those societal issues, um, I. I jumped at it. Well, we certainly are happy that you made a journey to Washington. I think mm -hmm. um, your being here has made a difference, certainly, as how the U.S. Virgin Islands have been perceived, and you've made a dent. And indeed, you were a champion in the early days, long before it became official, I believe, of Caribbean American Heritage Month. But why do you think it's important to have a space for this thing called Caribbean American Heritage Month? You know, so many people don't really know the Caribbean. They don't know the difference between the islands. I'm talking about members of Congress, even. And they see us as vacation spots, which is fine. Uh, uh, our economies are based on tourism. But they don't see the people. Mm -hmm. They don't see the society in which we live. Um, even as a US territory in the Caribbean, mm -hmm. it's hard to sometimes have people see that we're real people with the same issues, the same concerns, the same hopes, the same aspirations as uh, the rest of our fellow Americans. Um, and so I, it's really important to emphasize the many contributions that people from the Caribbean have made to this country from its earliest days. Exactly, exactly. And talking about that, as you say, they don't see the real people. Um, what are some of the pressing issues? Because it's interesting, as you say, you're an American territory. So even us as the quote unquote Caribbean immigrants, mm -hmm don't say, well, you're privileged. We perceive the U.S. Virgin Islands as privileged. But what are some of the pressing issues that, first of all, the Caribbean Americans, and this is a real sense, you really yeah. are Caribbean, Caribbean Americans American. by birth. Yeah. What are some of the pressing issues that Caribbean Americans from the U.S. Virgin Islands face, and how does that dovetail with you with the general conversation of Caribbean Americans from other Caribbean territories? Well, our economies are very difficult to sustain. We're small yes. economies, and the, for us, the national forces as well as the global forces for our neighbors in the Caribbean, the global economic changes really affect us uh, greatly. So all of us have economic issues, and I think that in our working for not only the Caribbean Americans here on the mainland, but th those of us in the Virgin Islands, uh, making sure that there are um, the, our economies be can become more stable and, and sustainable, that there are jobs um, and areas for entrepreneurship uh, for all of us can be also 
something that we can help the wider Caribbean through things like the Import-Export Bank, OPIC, and <laughs> other things um, as yes. opposed to OPEC, yes. which I could go into the oil in a minute. But yeah. um, I think um, those are the, some of the areas. Of course, I've worked most in health. Exactly. And so that's the biggest area for me. Um, I've spoken on health to Caribbean um, communities. Um, when we come here generally as first time immigrants, we're generally healthier than we are two or three <laughs> generations later. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, that's something that we really need to look at and what are the changes that make cause that to happen to us as, as we live here and um, move into the next generation in the United States. I think we change our eating habits for one and we probably change our exercise habits also as well. That's true. So health is, a, I think, one of the major areas mm -hmm. that I have tried to contribute Mm -hmm. to African Americans, to Caribbean Americans, to people, at, to my constituents at home, and to, to, to the Caribbean at large, um, especially in the area of HIV and AIDS. Mm -hmm. um, I've been very active in um, addressing that throughout the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. And so that's one of the areas. The other area is energy, I think. Yes, yes, and, yes, yes. Um, in as we are speaking here today, Carolec is meeting in St. Thomas. Mm -hmm. And um, obviously, the whole Caribbean, um, probably with the exception of Trinidad, um, <laughs> has very high energy prices. Yes, and yes. so we're looking at ways that we can uh, collaborate. Mm -hmm. um, our interest in perhaps starting to have an interconnection with Puerto Rico for the purchase of less expensive energy, electricity, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is our way of hopefully starting that Caribbean grid that can link us all together and lower prices for all of us. So health is probably my most um, important contribution, but we're also working on the energy space. Well, certainly the energy space is something, as you say rightly, the wider Caribbean countries mm -hmm. um, would, I think, want to find some common ground, because certainly if we consider the issue of renewable energy, whether it be wind energy, I understand that on, I think it's on one, St. Croix, I believe, or St. Thomas, there's a side of the island where the trees are literally bent over like that, yeah. meaning that you have capacity for wind, you have capacity for perhaps tidal and wave, there's opportunity yes, and, there. And sun and yes, absolutely, absolutely, and then with the linkage, I mean, some of our islands have geothermal, not all of us have that. Uh. There might be some that have a little more uh, possibility for some hydro, but um, I think if we, and to be isolated, you don't have a, a backup when something like a hurricane or some other natural or other disaster hits. So for us to be able to be linked Yes. in some way and, provides and, and, not only less cost but more security. And perhaps um, as we go forward, um, the issue of climate change may be another way in which yes. the Caribbean territories, both quote-unquote independent Caribbean, I don't know how much independent we could be, that's where we are America's third border, mm -hmm. and, and America's Caribbean as I call it, um, can come together. And perhaps it's a good time to that's tell me about enough. one of the things you think as governor, because we are really certainly excited about your campaign for governor. I mean, how do you think as governor you could really see some of these things begin to take shape with the access and the connections you already have? Sure. Well, one is continuing to pursue the interconnection, uh, the interest that we have in doing that. And I'm really so glad that our uh, utility is very much involved and part of Carolec because it begins to develop that relationship that we would want to continue. Um, sometime last year, I think, the, at, at the University of the Virgin Islands, which is a university that collaborates very much with the University of the West Indies, mm -hmm. we had a meeting on the Caribbean Challenge, which has to do with conserving our coastal uh, marine mm -hmm. ecologies mm -hmm. and collaborating throughout the Caribbean on that. But climate change is another big issue, and it's all related. It's related to our changing yeah, energy. It's related to conserving our, our, our coastal areas, our, the marine ecology and our fisheries. Um, but I'm on the climate change task force up here. I, I'll for, I, I'm always making the point that the Caribbean is very much at risk. Mm -hmm. um, while we probably contribute the least, even, exactly. even with the <laughs> fact that we're dependent on fossil fuel. Yes. We, our small uh, islands probably contribute the least, but we're very much at risk. 
And that's a, a very important area that is also tied in, I think, to the Caribbean challenge. Mm -hmm. Now, um, the current administration has said that they are supportive, but there have to be things put in place to really make that happen, to mm -hmm. really implement um, the, our participation in, in working with the rest of our Caribbean countries mm -hmm. to address the issues well, of did, well, conservation you know, of our fisheries and climate change. And one of the things I would like to see is that people always say there's no precedent, but there's no precedent for what's happening to us in humanity. And so tell me about the water challenge. The water challenge. Well, I mean, I can speak from, from our own area and from some of the meetings I've had where other um, Caribbean countries have been represented. But we've had, um, with the warming of our waters, uh, a very um, adverse effect on our reef systems. Mm -hmm. And while some of them are coming back, they're not coming back as healthy as they were before. So they're more susceptible to, um, to diseases that affect the, the coral. And so this, that's an issue that we hope to play a big role in um, doing research mm -hmm. that can protect our our reef systems and not just ours because we all share some of those same coral formations but to help that use that research along with I think there's there's a research entity in the Tobago area mm -hmm. that we could collaborate with to improve the health of our our coral reefs and thus our fisheries we also have a common problem in the lionfish yes yes and, yes um, yes I've been in we'll meetings. Have to start eating more land fish. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that's going to be the way. I haven't gotten there yet, but they tell me it's a it's a good uh, tasting fish. Is, yes, sir. Yes, yeah. so I've heard. Yes, <laughs> yes, but I've had we've had meetings in Puerto Rico once um, not too long ago, for example, where other countries of the Caribbean participated and talked about what they were doing. Yes. But it's a Caribbean problem, and yes. um, so that's something that we have to tackle together. That I would look forward to working on. Well, certainly, I think there's a lot of opportunity. Um, on another note, um, I don't know, I think we might be running out of time, but I did want to touch on the issue of potable water now. Because Thank we're goodness. in Ireland, I don't know if you have rivers, I presume we don't you have well water. No, we don't have any rivers. So, um, in terms of the economic development of the Virgin Islands going forward, what do you perceive as going on? What are some of the things you'd like to tackle there on, on the home country? And, and water? Yes. Well, you know, water is... Uh, supposed to be our next big challenge globally exactly that's why i'm asking globally exactly um we've implemented some um desal plants desalinization mm -hmm. plants for mm -hmm. water mm -hmm. we we um rely on rainwater quite a bit okay because we have catchments under homes homes okay. are built well, that's something under, perhaps we can learn from you in jamaica because we just are suffering a major drought our, and we our, don't have that on our homes no oh, our homes begin with building a cistern Okay. To catch water from the roof. And um, so we're so somewhat self-reliant as long as the rains, rains come. come. Uh, you know, and then the desal plants and the wells will supply, supply us if there's not enough rainfall to fill those cisterns. So it's, it's an issue. We have no rivers. We don't have lakes. And so um, we have to rely on our desal plants and our rainwater. And with the weather changing, with climate change, you never know what's going to happen. What, what we've had mm -hmm. um, is more rain than we are used to coming in short periods of time and creating a lot of flooding. And, um, <laughs> yeah, so yeah, it's so, either flood or drought. Yes, yes, so we're grappling with that because some of our, the way we've permitted building and development, mm -hmm. um, has created flooding in areas where we never had flooding before. We actually had wow. one lady drowned. Wow. Yes. And that, I mean, that was unheard of in the Virgin Islands when we had a heavy rain. Wow. And, you know, seven or eight inches, I think it was, in just a few hours. And, um, yeah, that was a very unfortunate incident. Well, you certainly have... Um a lot on your plate that's going to be on your plate as you go yes, forward. Yes. I, I certainly think that the experience of managing the halls of Congress position you to be able to manage the relationship between the U.S. government and the and the territory I as a governor. We, I think both my running mate and I are well positioned for that. I did, and well. that is what we will need to get yes. the support you need. Yes. And I, I certainly know that for us Caribbean Americans for whom you have been a champion, we wish you all the best in that in that run. Um, to sum up, 
Tell me if there's any special Caribbean hero or shero that you think of fondly. Well, you know, even in the Virgin Islands, we have quite a bit. Um, we have uh, the what we call our queens. We thought there were three. There seemed to be five that uh, started a labor revolt. Huh. Yes, and actually burned down half of the island. It was raise our money or we're gonna, you know, we burn down the island. And they were not. They were serious. I'm sure there were many women involved in our emancipation yeah, we as like well. Yeah, we like that for sure in the future. And um, the coal strike in St. Thomas, so mm -hmm. uh, we was Queen Kaziah. So we have many um, heroines in the Virgin Islands and heroes as well. Um, I was a big fan of Maurice Bishop, mm -hmm. so I always um, followed him very closely and was very um, devastated when the what happened happened with him in um, Grenada. Um, Danny Eugenia Charles, who I've met, mm -hmm. who um, actually I, I was a member, a founding member of the Caribbean Youth Organization ah. many years ago, and we would have conferences in the different uh, in different islands. And when awesome. she when we had it in Saint Thomas, she was our guest speaker. Great. Yeah. So I mean, we have so many people that I mean, we could depending on how far back you want to ah. go, but the. <laughs> There are many heroes and heroes that are in the Caribbean who have done great things in the Caribbean and who have done great things all around the world, including in the United States. And that's why June is such an important month for us to celebrate the, those people, their contributions, and the relationships that yes. have developed between our countries and the United States. Okay, well, um, I think I've asked you everything we have time for. I could sit here and talk for hours, yeah. but I want to thank you. Do you have anything to add, or have I covered um, everything? No, I just um, look forward to, to this coming Caribbean American Heritage Month and want to thank you for the role that you and ICS played in making sure that we have a Caribbean American Heritage Month. We would not have one but for your efforts. So with that, um, I wish you a great month, a great celebration, and a great future for the relationship between the Caribbean and the United States. Thank you so much, and Thanks. thank you for being with us. Oh, you're very welcome. My pleasure. <laughs>